call this meeting to uh, order of the DRB. What is it? May, uh, it's April 17th. Wow. <laughs> Felt like spring already after last weekend, right? Um, and um, so at this time, Meredith's going to do a quick overview of the uh, remote meeting procedures. She call them the hybrid meeting procedures. All right, so I am going to be sharing my screen. Um, this is more for people who are watching. Hmm. Uh, if everybody who, I'm gonna just go and mute some people. Um, Cause I have the power to do that. And that was some awesome background music, but not, there we go. All right, so. Um, the stuff that you're going to see on your screen is more for people who are watching this meeting via Orca Media, but the things I say are uh, applicable for everybody who's on remotely. So for those viewing tonight's Development Review Board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want to join the Zoom meeting with video options, you can type this link into your web browser and it should pop you right up into the Zoom meeting. Um, I will have to let you in, but I will get a notification of that. Um, alternatively, you can call into this phone number and when prompted, put in this meeting ID. And again, I'll get a prompt and let you into tonight's meeting. Um, if anybody is trying to access the meeting and having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, please make sure that your Zoom name includes both your first and last name so we know who we're speaking with and to assist us with um, calling on you as well as the recording secretary making the minutes. Um, note that turning on your video is optional. For everyone attending remotely, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. Um, note also that the Zoom chat function should be reserved for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. If you have a question or comment about an item on tonight's agenda, please raise your hand, either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, and then when you've been called on, you can unmute yourself. Please make sure to state your full name um, and address if you're making a comment on a permit application. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. All righty. The agenda. We have a motion. So moved. Motion from Kevin's. We have second. A second. Aye. All those in favor? Oh. Aye. Aye. Uh, the agenda is approved for this evening. Uh, okay, I do have a couple uh, comments this evening. I just want to thank everyone for filling in while I've been uh, out uh, recusing myself from multiple uh, applications and everything like that. Um, you know, I would love to be here. Um, but, um, you know, I did do some sort of thinking about uh, about this, um, and I'm happy to keep being the chair and everything like that um, moving forward. Um, but, you know, that VHB design, uh, you know, surveying full service engineering firm, we have other people that are members of boards across the state. Um, and so we've been communicating internally just about that we have consistency about, uh, you know, if an employee is on the board and we are involved, uh, you know, there will be a recusal just to keep it, uh, you know, simple and consistent. Uh, and so uh, that is the, the case uh, moving forward, you know, unfortunately. And uh, I am honored to have a vice chair slash co-chair. Uh, maybe we should amend the regs to uh, <laughs> include that as the, the name of it. Uh, but... Um, yeah, that's in um, the story. And um, although it's not VCFA specifically, you know, we are still involved in the, um, you know, permitting of that, the applications uh, after the Charles Street uh, application this evening. Uh, so I will be turning it over to Sharon, um, you know, after the first application. Um, and um, I think that's it. Does anyone have any questions on the board about that? No? All right. Um, so next order of business is the uh, minutes from 320. Uh, and um, I would make a motion to approve those. Motion by Sharon. Sweet. We have a second. 
Uh, <laughs> and um, how do we vote? Aye. 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 All right, those are approved. I recuse myself. I was not at that meeting and uh, was not um, the chair. Um, okay, that moves us to our first uh, order of business in the bulk of this meeting, uh, which is 13 Charles Street. Um, who do we have here uh, presenting on behalf of the, this application? Is this Devin? Yes, remotely. Remotely is Devin. Yeah, All righty. Hi. Okay. My name is Devin Green. I'm the owner and resident at 13 Charles Street, and I submitted an application to remove a failing retaining wall and a garage um, and replace it with a new retaining wall and a carport. Um, we're not increasing the footprint of the building. Um, and the main reason I think for this permit is the-, the Hold on one second, Devin. Thank you so much. That was a great opening, great opening summary. Uh, you're moving things along quickly, which is we oh, all love. Sorry. Uh, uh, so, um, anyone else here to speak on the uh, Charles Street application, uh, other than yourself? That will be providing testimony this evening. Yeah, uh, I know Shana Casper had a question about the application. Shana, if you think you might be testifying. Um, Maybe raise your hand or, or just let us know if you think you might speak about this application. No, I was just really interested. I just had never been to a meeting and I got the thing in the mail and I was like really curious about the meeting. So that's why I'm here. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Shannon. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Devin, we're just going to swear you in uh, real quickly as a uh, witness for your testimony this evening. Uh, and uh, would you raise your right hand uh, to be sworn in as a witness? Okay, great. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. I do. Oh, great. Wonderful. Um, and uh, you provided an excellent opening summary, and uh, we will now have Meredith uh, provide a uh, brief technical summary of this and then uh, give you the reins back. <laughs> um, okay, so for the board, this as... Um, Devin, summarize, this involves the demolition of a garage and rebuild of a retaining wall um, and addition of a carport. The reason this is before the board tonight is because it involves steep slopes of greater than or equal to 30%. Um, it, the, the actual square footage involving those slopes is pretty minimal um, and mainly dealing with some exposed ledge and revising the drainage around the um, footprint of the building to direct water away from the foundation. So the main, the key determination that the board needs to make tonight is whether the application complies with the steep slopes um, standards um, and staff has, has estimated that it does, um, but it's the board's determination to make. Wonderful. Okay, Devin, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, but I think what would be helpful for this, if we can throw the, uh, like one of the site plans yeah. up um, yeah. on the screen, uh, probably a good visual for everybody. Yeah, so Devin, um, I'm gonna share my screen if that's okay with you, and if you need me to move somewhere else, you just tell me. That works for me. All right. I just... So you can... You want to have Devin start talking while I'm getting to the right page? Yeah, yeah, so go ahead, Devin, while she scrolls to it. Uh, yeah, so um, so the the square footage is about 290 square feet of the 30% um, grade, uh, but it is next to sort of adjoining um, other 30% gradient and um, that is actually bedrock primarily, so we don't anticipate any movement there and we're not blasting into the bedrock, we're keeping it as is. Um, and so I think that is all I really have. There's, um, you know, I've worked with the contractors in terms of erosion efforts. And so um, I think we have everything covered there. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. So just so that the public knows, if that's okay, the, the areas here in bluish green, those are the areas where there's 30% or greater slopes that are gonna be 
disturbed in one way or another. This over here is sort of the drainage swale area and a little bit into where they're building a new retaining wall. There's a tiny bit here that's going to get graded. And then this area over here, I believe, is the area that's mostly the bedrock um, where I think that what's the, the quote unquote disturbance is going to be laying down some new soil and some matting to help direct the water away. So changing, changing the grade here by putting some stuff on top of the bedrock. So it's not something that's going to like disturb nearby slopes or disrupt them or weaken them. So are those blue areas all areas over 30% or all areas of grading? Those filling? are the blue are areas of 30% or greater right. slopes that, that will be changed in some way or another. Um, the, I can zoom in a little bit more. There's other areas that where the grade will change. So like the, the solid lines are the new proposed grades and the dotted lines are the existing. But the rest of this, if, it, if everything else had been happening and just not the areas in blue green, this would have never come before the board because right. it's not enough of a disturbance of steep enough slopes to trigger board review. Right. Um. Okay, so to, to guide us with some questions here, I guess I'm um, just going to move down for those following along on the uh, to the page four of the staff report, um, which um, sort of talks about this uh, project uh, as its relation to section, section 3007, 3007, which is our steep slopes. Um, and uh, this was one of the most recent updates, right, Meredith? It was, it was actually one of the, probably the second updates to the zoning regs yeah um the first one we fixed just the chart um about what percentage an area of slopes triggered different reviews and then the next big change was revising the steep slopes provision and, and making sure it was it was clear as to what triggered you know what 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 was allowed perfect um so um section 3007c uh is what we just discussed that's what requires a uh, an engineer planner report uh, and a hearing um, for slopes over 30%. Um, as we've seen, that information exists. It was done by DeWolf Engineering, is that correct? Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. Perfect. And um, so, you know, here we are. We've, we've satisfied uh, number C, unless uh, letter C of 3007, uh, unless board members have any uh, concerns or questions related to that. Um, so seeing none, um, it is our decision and discretion here as the board to um, decide if this plan and report that was provided um, and the site conditions um, are sufficient. Um, and there's a list of uh, criteria that we have. And um, I think it maybe makes sense to go through them one by one. Uh, pretty, uh, you know, straightforward. Um, and so we go to letter D of 3007. Um, it's letter D of the report. Letter D Section of the report. Section 3007H, just for anybody ah, following great. along at home. Sorry. Perfect. I, Thank you, Meredith. I, there's only so many options for lettering the uh, sections. Yeah, the it's got to be. I never realized how complicated that must be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we sort of have a charge. The development on steep slopes shall be safe and not have an undue adverse pick impact on the slope stability. Development, therefore, shall be designed to limit the amount of disturbance, clearing of existing natural vegetation and impervious surface in order to minimize potential for erosion, stormwater runoff, flooding, water quality, and impairment. Uh, so I see here uh, you're proposing some drain pipes and catch basins and whatnot to capture things. Uh, Devin, you want to just like summarize that real quickly, what, what's going on and what you're proposing? <laughs> Um, I think you've sort of summarized it. We have some um, drainage uh, that will help, you know, right now we do not have those drain pipes and that will help um, avoid erosion. So it looks like you have the slopes area on the north side of the house uh, draining right. into a catch basin uh, going into some pipes and then out into the city's, uh, you know, catchment system. Uh, and then, uh, you know, on the rear of the garage, uh, you know, it appears that it's quite, pretty small in size. Um, and the drainage will be going on the south side of the, there. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the, oh, that's it goes a, down 
This is a like a swale here. Swale there, yeah, all right. I yeah. think this area will still go this way. And then on the uh, south uh, uh, west corner of the house, um, looks like we're pretty much just putting it back to the grade at which it is right now. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. All right. Um, so I don't see any issues there. I think a well thought out plan. Um, and no s new slopes will be, uh, you know, you know, created greater than 30%. Um, that seems to be correct with your plan here. That's right. And that seems to be staff's uh, finding also. Um, and, um, you know, preserve distinctive natural features. Um, you know, I don't, I don't I think this is pretty minimal. Uh, you're working with the buildings that are there and uh, it's a very typical situation in Montpelier. Uh, so I, I think, uh, you know, we're good, we're good there. Um, and then, um, you know, the next one's about maintain the pre-existing rate and retain the pattern of stormwater leaving the property. Um, it does seem like this is a much more engineered uh, and thought out plan than what previously existed. Um, and um, yeah, I think I'd note the applicant is, uh, you know, taking strides to uh, make things as uh, conforming as possible uh, with that re regard. Yes. Um, and then, you know, produce a final grade that's compatible with the surrounding uh, natural terrain. Um, it, it seems um, appropriate. Um, does any board members have any comments or questions thus far? No, it just looks, looks like a pretty solid project. That yeah. I think so, too. Uh, I think. Renovation and replacement and upgrade. And wonderful. Excellent. Wonderful. And the preparation is well documented. very cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Let's make sure we're not missing anything. We'll uh, skip down maybe to uh, page six of the staff report. Mm -hmm. So uh, staff has suggested uh, that we find this project uh, has minimal disturbance uh, with steep slopes and complies with 3007. Um, I think I would agree. I'm sensing the same from the board as we just discussed. Um, and um, that appears to be the ish, the, the it, it, Meredith. Yeah, I, there, there weren't, I had no questions for you. It's just, I can't officially make the determination. No, I, I, get, it. Um, I get it. So yeah, all the, all the things in red in here are just the, here's the standard you have to look at, but I had flagged no issues for finding that it was actually in compliance. A lot of those steep slope standards actually don't appear to apply to this project because nothing new is being built. There's no sure. rework, really, of what's there now on any grand scale. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, as, as Kevin said, I think well-documented, uh, great plan by the engineer, uh, I think going above and beyond in this um, instance uh, to create a great project. So um, I would accept a motion if that's the direction the board wants to go. Failing retaining wall and garage, construct a new retaining wall and build a new carport on land involving slopes of 30% at 13 Charles Street as presented in application number Z-2023-0030 and supporting and supplemental materials. Motion by Jean. Second. Second by Kevin. Uh, I guess we'll do a roll call vote uh, here. Jean, how do you vote? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Yes. Catherine? Yes. Abbott. And then uh, Joe? Yes. And uh, is that it? Oh, Michael? Michael's on. Yes. I'm here. Michael Lazorczak, I'm here. Yes. Perfect. And uh, Rob, myself, votes yes. Uh, so that is unanimously uh, approved. Thank you. Meredith, you have any uh, final parting words for? Uh, <laughs> here. Uh, so, Devin, this is your verbal approval. Um, for it to be official, we need to do a written decision um, because there's no conditions that go along with that. Once the written decision gets pulled together and signed by Rob as the chair, um, we'll be able to issue that and the zoning permit at the same time. Um, and so we'll be in touch with you when that's ready. And you can either, once once you get that, you'll be able to either come and pick it up at the planning office or we'll um, mail it to you via certified mail. So you'll have that option once we 
get it all pulled together. We'll get Great. It. Thank you so much. We'll get it to you as soon as we can. Just note that I am out of the office at training for the rest of the week, so I won't be crafting many decisions this week. Okay. <laughs> well, I hope you have fun. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Devin. Thanks. Bye. And at this point, I will turn the uh, meeting uh, over uh, to Sharon for the duration. Okay. Uh, I am going to scooch over just so I can see the Zoom participants, if there yes. are any. Yep. Okay, um, so our next application that we're looking at tonight is um, the 35 College Street. Do we want to have the applicants come up to the table? Feel free to grab some more chairs. I wasn't sure how many of you were going to be yeah. coming to speak at the table, <laughs> but you, everybody who's going to talk needs yeah. to be able to talk into that microphone. Talk. Which so, moves around pretty yeah. easily. It does move around fairly easily, but try not to disconnect anything. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a multi-tiered system. Okay. Uh, you can also <laughs> flex back and forth if you need to. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you can slide over next to yeah. yeah, just slide it over. Next Don't disconnect that mic, though. Nice. Thanks. Okay. Um, I... Should we swear people in first? Yeah. Or, okay. I think we'll swear people in so, first. So um, everybody who's going to testify, which looks like there's a table full here, and then uh, anybody in the audience who's interested in giving testimony on this project, or anybody who is on the Zoom. Uh, if you would raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalty of perjury? I do. do. Excellent. Um, Meredith, you want to give us a brief? Yes. Uh, I'll do it. Well, maybe I'll have the applicant give it. Whichever you want. Six one. Uh, Your whatever, chair. Let's, see, let's, have, um, let's have the applicant go and just give us a brief description of the 35 College Street. And then we'll get the tech from Mary. Okay. okay. Um, hello, I'm Casey Ellison. I live in Middlesex. And um, we're here to um, apply for some conditional uses to be shifted to permitted uses um, on 35 College Street, which is the Gary Library. It, would you like me to say more, or is that a good start? Um, maybe what maybe what? What the uses yeah, are. They are. So yeah, the ones that we're applying for are um, restaurant and theater performance and exhibition convention or conference structure. Okay. Um, that actually um, brings to mind something that I wanted the board to discuss before we got further into the application. Um, if you read the staff report, Meredith talked about her interpretations as the planning administrator. That, um, that I, I guess I can pull the question up here exactly, uh, that personal and professional services uses to find that's the um, establishment that sells specialized skills or knowledge, and that she is basically incorporating these um do you want to just state that yeah <laughs> so it's going to be part of my technical overview uh, so okay it, it, <laughs> because it. it's an a, because it's a point that's applicable in both applications mm -hmm. i think if we can reach agreement on that whether we're either going to agree with her interpretation or not then um that would save some time yeah. knowing that ahead of time yeah um so if it's okay casey i'm going to rephrase something that you said there sure. yeah go ahead um so the the only you we're not there, there's no asking for a conditional use to become a permitted use with this kind of application. The request is for actual conditional use approval for these uses to be implemented at 35 College Street. Um, and as I have been interpreting things for the last five years under these zoning regs, um, the, in, the, the restaurant use, the um, exhibition conference center, um, the ones that Casey mentioned, those are clearly conditional uses. They're easy to define. Um, 
the one of the other aspects of the business is more of the offices for the health and wellness practitioners, which is a whole variety of different types of people. Um, and as I have been interpreting things the last five years, all of those have been fitting into the personal and professional services use, which is a permitted use in mixed use residential, the zoning district we're dealing with. Um, because the personal and professional services definition covers a whole variety of things, um, including a quote unquote spa. There's no definition of a spa anywhere in there, but um, the, the other possible use that I've found that might apply to something like this that I have ruled out in numerous situations so far over the last five years is a medical clinic, right? And medical clinic in mixed use residential would be a conditional use, not permitted like personal and professional services. But medical clinic is listed in the use table under not commercial uses, but this other category of uses that is more like a hospital, a big thing with, with um, lots more public access where you don't necessarily have by appointment. So it's a matter of scale. It's a, I look at it as a matter of scale. That's how I've been interpreting it. So I have issued administrative permits for um, acupuncture clinics, massage therapist offices, um, shifting of optometrist offices under the personal and professional services use because that's where it seems to fit the best. Um, a medical clinic, in my mind, is something that's bigger. It's something where you don't necessarily have appointments. It might be more like an urgent care clinic where people just show up um, or maybe something that runs vaccine clinics where you suddenly have a whole bunch of people show up, not a strictly by appointment certain office hours situation. Um, and that's how I've been doing it. But since it is now before the board, you guys so have to sort of relook at that interpret interpretation. So maybe let's just do that items. right now. Maybe just take a. Yeah, I, um, I think because if depending on what your determination is there, other aspects of the application may need to be amended. The other items can still be discussed, but that particular issue. Thoughts? Do people have thoughts about this? I agree with Meredith. Okay. I mean, I, I think I, uh, that logic holds for me. Could you just restate it again in the simple? Uh, uh, it's, the problem is it's not simple. <laughs> I know, I know that. But I'm, but I'm right. trying to wrestle with so, it. So, this application is all set up, and I did the analysis as the offices for the various health and wellness aspects of 150 Main Street's project fall in the personal and professional services category, which includes in the examples a spa. So things like, for me, when I think of a spa, sauna, massage, you might get aromatherapy, maybe you'll meet with a nutritionist, right? There's all these aspects. Um, but some people might say, hmm, you might have a psychologist there. Or, ooh, what if it's a naturopath? So where does it veer off into a medical service? Um, and because the definition of medical clinic specifically is uh, the use of a structure or part of a structure to provide health care services to people primarily as outpatients. That is immensely broad. Are out spa participants patients? But a spa is specifically listed as an example in per the, personal the professional spa, services. The spa is, yeah. is listed a as spa as personal is professional a services. specific item as an example of what can be a personal or professional service. That's pretty clear. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. And that's why I've been going that way. So okay. I guess the other thing that, that I wanted to add to that, and just in you know, thinking about that issue, is that if you drive through literally any neighborhood in Montpelier, there are a variety of personal and professional services <laughs> that are available that seem very similar to what this is offering. And I think that your interpretation of scale is important. Mm -hmm. And it seems, mm -hmm. it seems consistent with what you've been doing, and it seems like... 
it would not be a hard thing to be consistent with going forward. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. I don't know. And as a as an administrative note, mm -hmm. the lack of clear definitions of how you distinguish this type of wellness clinic from, say, a doctor's office, from an urgent care clinic, from a 24-7 place is something that I've talked to the planning director about and is high on the list of clarifications to make in the zoning so that there are bright line tests going forward. Well, over the last five, four, four or five years, I mean, there's been a, a sea of change mm -hmm. uh, in this area, you know, particularly with the uh, home-based systems. Yep. So I don't have any problem moving forward on that. Awesome. I need to hear from the applicant yeah. a little more as to, I'm a little confused with, so, so with, with the project's description as far as also holding spaces for um, entertainment or performing arts or community versus just, I, I just wanted to hear from the applicant as far So that's a separate part. Is it? Is, we'll so what, what we were, okay. um, I just wanted, because this, because this particular thing about personal and professional services yeah. was in both applications and it was sort of up in the air oh, and cool. it would mean that we had to kind of readdress everything if we didn't agree with Meredith I thought we should just get it on the record that yes. we did okay, okay. We yeah. so, 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 okay yeah. and I'll jump in to also agree with your interpretation in that you're looking at scale and trip generation mm -hmm. as opposed to you know a personal interpretation of the nature of the services yeah. And um, agreed that it should be clarified. And, you know, you've got a long list of things that need to be clarified, <laughs> so let's get this on the list, too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I <laughs> 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 haven't been necessarily doing it wrong for the last five years. <laughs> okay, so do you want to maybe, you know, like, um, do a little quick technical wrap-up yes. on the rest of it? Yes. And then we'll turn it back over to the applicant and hear Jean's questions. Awesome. And now that that's dealt with. Um, and I already summarized about the, the change of use. So the, the reason, now this is before the board, is because some of the uses that are being proposed in the flex space at 35 College are conditional uses. Um, and this is a little, a little different from some applications because there isn't one specific use with a specific number of square feet that is happening on the um, first floor of, which is the upper floor, but the first floor of 35 College Street, it's a flex space so that for some type of events, it might all be a pop-up restaurant for all, where almost all of the 4,000 square feet is a restaurant for that evening or two evenings. But then um, other times, it may be that the restaurant part isn't in use at all and you've got um, some leftover maybe aspect of the academic library going on in there in a corner that during a restaurant period would just sort of be nice ambiance in the background um and then you've got you know some other event where you've got people showing up so what we've what i directed the applicant to do is to say okay here is the most intensive possible use for the 4,000 square feet to then look through for conditional use review. Okay. Um, so that is the big question for the board. Um, do note that the staff report does not incorporate any of the public comments that I sent around to you all that came in after the staff report was published. Um, some of those comments have some um, suggestions or questions that might be amenable to conditions. Um, and then there's a couple um, minor questions in here outside of the conditional use review criteria. One about a, um, whether or not a specified loading area is needed and then a landscaping determination. But those are the, the big question is, does this application um, meet the conditional use criteria and are there any conditions that the board wants to add in to any potential approval to deal with some of the public comments? So let's maybe go back to the applicant and hear more about your project. Who wants to go in <laughs> So, and whoever's talking needs to have the microphone right near them so that it can be recorded for minutes and everybody remotely can hear. Okay. Um, so what would you like to hear right now? I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, you are proposing a flex space. Maybe a little bit more about that, what, what you're talking about. 
Yes. So um, basically, um, what we're proposing is to understand whether um, we'll be able to have a space that includes food service and um, drink service. So alcohol served, food served. Um, we'd like to have a space for events to occur. So theater space, cabaret space, small concert venue space. Um, and basically what would be happening would be kind of a variety of things overlaying during business hours. So we've kind of outlined that there would potentially be business hours all day long. So 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. on the weekdays and potentially later on the week on the weekends um, so basically you know things would be happening at different times during the day so in the morning we would you know ex uh, imagine kind of like more of a juice and coffee bar situation with some food served and potentially kind of a co-working space in the main room um, and kind of going into the evening. These are, these are just examples. For example, the co-working isn't something we've settled on, but it's something we're discussing. Um, going into the evening with more kind of food service happening all day long. And when I say food service, we're not talking about like a full restaurant. We're talking about more of a cafe without a hood, um, sort of a less intensive food service situation with potentially some takeout or grab and go kind of things as well. Um, and into the evening, where we would have kind of varying arts events, concert events, theater events occurring, so it's sort of like a multimedia situation with the food service and drink service serving that as well. And this is all kind of the upstairs space. We've also talked about having um, potentially some office spaces. We have, a you know, there's a couple smaller spaces in the room that would potentially be rented out or used as part of co-working. Um, what we're envisioning is sort of like a multi-layered, multi-dimensional um, thing that would bring kind of life into the space at all, all hours. Um, am I forgetting anything? Well, we're just talking about the upstairs right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Yeah, we've talked about a food incubator space as well. So what that would mean to us in this space would be potentially having local smaller food businesses that maybe don't want to start their own restaurant um, have like a space to start out in and um, we've talked about featuring kind of pop-ups of different foods um, the one that I keep latching onto personally is I don't know if anyone's familiar with miso hungry I at Bolton they serve like um, little um, Japanese rice ball sandwiches with nori wrapped around them and miso soup so things like that where you don't need a really big prep space but you can make kind of a nice fun product and have kind of the townsfolk get like a little more variety with foods that we don't have and all that kind of stuff and also serve the help help people have a little bit easier time starting up and sharing space with others sharing space and expenses Questions from the board about the content of their flex space? Um, you uh, received all the comments that have been uh, given out. Um, mm -hmm. uh, do you want to try to maybe address some of those? Sure. Um, Which one would you like to start with? <laughs> um, I uh, was, <coughs> I had um, two questions that I th thought were interesting um was a reversal of the direction of the one-way traffic um you know just thinking about that space i was like well that kind of makes more sense yes um that's but, what we had wanted uh have you spoken with the college about that possibility i mean that would be their decision correct uh, that's unclear um we had been told that maybe it was um dpw's decision they seemed right, right with it uh so the if you were to make it two lanes uh -huh. that would be a potential issue um i think i forwarded corey line who's our uh from department of public works he's our traffic guy he said that reversing traffic there would not be an issue from dpw standpoint great um you know it would be a part of a probably in conjunction with this approval an amendment to that site plan to have the traffic flow change a little bit uh -huh. um Technically, once you start changing traffic flow, you have to kind of look at where your parking is. Um, 
And so it might mean having to do more formalized striping of parking spaces as part of the approval. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I think that's that's even if it's just a formalizing where those parking spaces are and making it consistent with what was on the site plan, that could potentially be a, a you know condition, condition of approval, or it could be something where the, they just have to come back the next okay. meeting. But that that would be that would be doable, I think. Okay, so that was one thing that I thought um, when I was looking at the application. Um, I know that there were some neighbor concerns about noise. Um, Can I just real quickly speak back to that the driveway thing just to make, make it clear that that is something that we had been really interested in and so we would love to work with that um, and we would okay. love to reverse the direction and we would be willing, yeah, we'd love to hear what that would take. So, yeah. It just traffic wise, it really seemed to make more yeah. sense. People do drive in it that way anyway. So yeah, <laughs> all the, I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, so I think you know, to get that as a full one way or another, probably what it would entail is having a more um, detailed site plan of the parking and the traffic flow with clarity on where signs would be changing. Sure. Um, and it would be something that would apply not just to you guys, but to the whole parcel. So it'd probably be something to bring all the players in since you're gonna do it anyway. If you wanna change where some of the parking spaces are to memorialize them, you could, that could be part of it um, without necessarily adding any parking spaces. Great. You know, you, you, know, you would need to shift like do not enter signs to the back of College Hall so that we didn't get people going down that direction. Mm -hmm. And signs that indicated like where the exit was, like which way you're supposed to get out and go to get mm -hmm. out, that kind of thing yeah. would need to be and taken you, care of. Yeah, and probably because everybody's used to that being an exit, having there be some sort of little entrance sign mm -hmm. in that space so people start understanding where the traffic flow is different. Um, and something to check with probably the college yeah. about reaching out to some of the larger service providers like trash and everything who maybe have been used to not having to turn around and be able to just go out that way. I don't know sure. if they do or not because that's narrow. But yeah. the coordination um, parcel, parcel wide, wide with how traffic flow is so that there's new directional signage everywhere to make clear Definitely. to everybody. We also, that's going to be part of our sh the, the shared agreements we're going to be working on with the college and the the other purchasers so we the signage will be part of that as well yeah. so signage and then restriping for clarification on where people are i think is something that could be all worked in so on cool. the noise um in terms of have you um have you done any kind of like testing or measuring of noise um not not at this moment in time, but we do have a lot of anecdotal evidence from the past use of the space okay. that it's been used that way quite a bit, um, quite frequently with some pretty loud concerts, and there haven't been any formal complaints filed by the neighbors. So that's the evidence that we have at this point. Um, concerts in the auditorium. You're, you've got to be near the microphone or nobody's here. Concerts in the auditorium and in the library as well. College. And College Hall, yeah. Mm -hmm. So have there been concerts in the library? As far as I know, there have been events and the like large events there, correct, that we've heard about. But yeah, more concerts, I guess, in the, in the gym. In the rock and library, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Other thing, yeah. But in terms of... Sp What's that? It's true. You can, Katie, oh, yeah. Katie can tell us more. <laughs> right, Katie, do you want to come up to a microphone? Talk to it? Come talk to this microphone, Katie. Okay. <laughs> and just identify yourself, yeah. Vermont College of Fine Arts. So we we regularly held uh, board dinners there that have gone late into the evening. There have been concerts. Our music composition program has had concerts in that space. It's not the the natural place. We normally have that in Alumni Hall or in College Hall, but it's certainly a place that we've frequently used in a multi-purpose fashion. Great. Yeah. Thank you. We're also just thinking of like proximity in terms of like if it's alumnus hall it's potentially even closer to the neighbors who would be worried about noise so gary being a little more removed um and being kind of right in the same vicinity of a place that's had very loud conferences or con concerts <laughs> we were conferences. thinking very loud very <laughs> very aggressive conferences that's, that's horrible <laughs> we're thinking that it's probably going to be a similar scenario okay hopefully um 
uh, do other people have questions? I have a couple more, but I don't need to do all the talking here. Hi, Ellen. Uh, I'm sorry, Ellen Serdell, and I used to be a member of the um, Green Mountain Film Festival, and we had events at the library, and uh, a couple of the also the big space in the uh, BCFA building, and they went late at the library, and we never had any issue or complaint filed against us, and this is years ago. So I just thought I'd put that in. Okay. Thank you. Great. Since we started on public with noise, do we want to just bring in the public since we got a comment or yeah, not? Yeah, if there's, um, uh, do we have people who uh, have questions? Yeah. Okay. Stick, yeah, stick into noise right now first, since we're, uh, that's what yeah. opened it let's, up. Let's uh, stick with the noise for right now. Anybody remotely have something they want to say about noise concerns? Okay. Um, yeah, I know there was, Paul, just as a reminder that in the written comments, one of those was a concern about hours of operation and whether things could go later than 10 or not just because of the flex and the noise ordinance it has a drop the city noise ordinance has a drop of allowable noise after a certain hour but there's no like set hours of operation or anything like that right uh i guess i guess my understanding is it sounds it sounds like they have had things there and the noise ordinances have been in place and there hasn't been a complaint um so just making sure we had all oh, the that, that, that seems to work later. for me. Um, the other question that I had, uh, it, and um, I think, think it was Paul Carnahan that brought up uh, the locations of the dumpsters. That is a long walk at night, you know, for bringing trash out uh, when you're done with your restaurant shift. I just, uh, it, I don't know if there's, I, I see Katie getting right up to talk about that. <laughs> read through the comments earlier today and talked to my director of facilities and he said it would be really easy to put some um, smaller bins much closer to the building just you know that dumpster is there so that if we need it it's available but we certainly can make adjustments so that it's more convenient for for folks okay I thought that was a legitimate concern um, Uh, Meredith? <laughs> Sorry, just if that's the solution on that, just a note that it would be part of the, the amended site plan that would include the parking situation, because mm -hmm. so the, the location of them needs to be identified, and they would probably need to have, depending on where they are, they might need some kind of screening or something. Um, you know, if they're viewable from the street. If it, right. they're really tucked in behind the building, we probably don't need to worry about screening. Um, though you might want to, as mentioned in the comments, think about whatever those bins are having some sort of bear proofing on them um, because there is a pretty big area of woods and wilderness back behind there. So I guess there have been bear problems. So would, um, would, That would be part of an amended uh, a site plan that would need to be filed. Okay, so the site plan needs to be amended to show yeah. a new location. Yep. Of bear-proof dumpsters. Yeah, and if they have to, do, yeah, bear-proof dumpsters. Yes. Okay. Um, perfect. <laughs> We're gonna float them about 15 feet in the air. <laughs> <laughs> the pulley system. Magic. Um. I guess I just, if that's gonna be a, an actual condition of the permit. Um, I would request that it's not that specific. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Bear-proof bear dumpsters are, are a thing. That no, seems I'm, like a I'm sorry. Bit out of, no, uh, that, that's fine. That is not a dumpster with a lid. <laughs> dumpster. <laughs> screened. A screened. A screened dumpsters. If it's not bear-proof, that's on you guys, and you'll be dealing with it. Right. Oh. No, in, in no. Some regions of the lock. We we we're not we're not asking for super fancy. Just yeah. just something closer to your. Um, to your back door. Um, there was also a question about loading docks, Meredith, that you identified. Yeah, so it's just a it's a determination I think the board needs to make. Mm -hmm. I, based on the attestations in the application, it doesn't look like there's going to be anything bigger than like single unit trucks coming there for deliveries. There appears to be 
adequate space behind the existing building without having to adjust um, the parking areas or designate a, a designated loading area. Like these are single unit trucks that are going to pull up, find a place to spark, park out of those 38 spaces, unload, you know, reload. But the board needs to just confirm that they agree with that, that it doesn't look like they need a designated loading pull up area. Any thoughts by board members? Would we need a voting space? <laughs> we don't believe so. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let me ask, out of the 113 parking spaces behind the buildings, is it all, all accessible at any given time during an event? Is for some is, is, I'm sorry, is all accessible? the parking spaces, the, the 113 parking spaces behind the buildings. Are they all accessible to? Uh, like, who? say you had a, like an evening event. Yeah. No. No. Mm -mm. no we're looking at um, a smaller number of those spaces being right. designated, designated for us. Yeah. Is that what you're mm -hmm. saying? Uh, would it be designated for the Gary Library? Well, they they don't they don't necessarily need to have like very specific ones on the, mm. the zoning because all of the parking in the back is within the distance the uh, for compound. the minimum distance for having parking as associated with a space okay. um and you know the looking at their buildings under the minimum parking space requirements that we have in the zoning regs if they're using the first floor of the gary library at its max level for minimum parking needs as well as at the same time using all of the wellness center offices, right, all the whatever mm -hmm. treatment spaces they have, they have enough out of the parking spaces that they have been agreed to okay. on the parcel. Yep. Um, and probably your biggest, the way I looked at it, probably their biggest events would probably be more evening events or weekend events when maybe the treatment spaces right. wouldn't need parking. Yeah. Um, so within the purview of what zoning can require, right. my review is they have more than sufficient okay. parking. And then there's some public concerns regarding the, the par parking, um, street parking, you know, so. The residential versus residential. non-residential? Yeah. I thought we got a very nice comment in the mail yeah. regarding that. I just, uh, I really appreciated her um, take yeah. on that it's just an, sort of semi-exclusionary, unnecessary step to take. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to read any of that out just um, so that sure. on the record? Sure. Yeah. I don't have to necessarily read it all. Um, <coughs> so there, there was a, a comment from someone um, concerned about the potential for um, events using up on-street parking, especially the more um, residential streets versus, say, College Street. Um, and there was a um, follow-up to that um, from Christine Zakai um, that made several points, um, including that one, the city zoning already calls for off street parking for residences in this neighborhood. So residents are largely already parking on their own private property. Um, there was also a comment on, you know, if, if suddenly those side streets were resident only parking on the street, um, isn't that gonna cause problems when you have people visiting from town and they can't park on the street? Do you have to suddenly have special parking permits, um, including when you have you know, a service call? Um, there was also issues about, you know, once you start doing that, you start having to figure out some form of enforcement. And then as Sharon noted, um, I'm gonna read this one verbatim, Resident-only parking sends a clear message that non-residents are not welcome. In an era where carefully cultivated culture wars seek to sow divisiveness between people of different economic circumstances, different races, people of different countries of origin, etc., I'd like to encourage our city to choose to be welcoming. Let's commit to having public goods like public streets continue to exist for everyone. So I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> And thank you for members of the public for raising all sorts of questions and thoughts. Yeah, and, and generating some really good feedback. Um, let me see, what else do we need to do here? Uh, you can take a minute while I make some notes on the... OK. 
Okay. <laughs> Draft motion. Transportation impacts. I'm sorry? Transportation impacts. Traffic impacts. Going into the conditional use review yeah. analysis okay. of the parts traffic. All right. So the section um, that we're going to be looking at next, and this is in front of me, uh, section 3303 traffic, um, and uh, I feel like the first part of this was handled uh, in this, primarily in the staff report in terms of trip duration was, uh, it, it didn't seem like it was going to be an impact, should we review that? I, I mean, I'm... Uh, you mean whether or not a full traffic study was necessary? That yeah, part? I mean, I don't think I don't think a full traffic study is necessary, and it seemed that the number of trips that you calculated um, were well within the acceptable range for that area. That was the conclusion of Department of Public Works as well. So that's good. Is that based on the on the new on the, on the uses that they're describing, or do you like, to explain that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, walk us through yeah. that. So what I um, asked the applicants to provide, and I confirmed this with Corey Line, who's our traffic person at the Department of Public Works, um, the project management director, is the analysis is comparing the quote unquote existing uses. So as that was an academic library use for that building, um, and so doing an estimate of how many trips that generated um you know it's somewhere between probably a peak library use and something a little less because vcfa was not a um full residential you know institution the entire time but other members of the public also use the library um so took a a sort of conservative approach to how much traffic that would generate and then looked at the max potential traffic generation of the new uses, which would be a high turnover restaurant based on the, um, there's a ITE traffic manual that gives you these numbers. This is what any traffic analyst is gonna use. Um, and so looked at if, if the, because the, the conditional use space was a high turnover, full 4,000 square foot restaurant, how many trips would that generate at the peak hour and then compare so you're looking at the increase in traffic in the neighborhood at nearby intersections um, and that's even if you look at this max capacity restaurant that increase is less than 50 trips at the peak hour um, even in the evening you're you're not looking at the kind of new traffic impacts that um, according to our regulations, require a more in-depth traffic study. Um, you know, and like I said, tried to tried to use some, some sort of conservative numbers, looking at the highest potential impact and sort of a medium range what's there existing, knowing that um, it fluctuated with the and, VCFA and a use. high turnover restaurant is more impact than a concert. Mm hmm Okay. Yep, a high turnover restaurant has more people coming and going within that one hour. It's not looking at how many parking spaces you need. It's looking at how many yes, trips. Traffic. Yeah. Because um, it's not about necessarily getting vehicles in. It's how many ve new vehicles are you having going through all the nearby intersections, all condensed into that period. Okay. Um, and you know, a concert in a four thousand square foot space isn't actually going to have that many traffic because you've got performance space, right? And then you have your space to mingle and there's layers in there also of um, like fire safety code that we don't deal with, but about what the capacity is of that space, how many people they're allowed to have inside. So that's the ITTE traffic generation looks at some of those things when they look at how many trips per hour, I believe. I have a question. You know, in the application, there's um, yeah, lots of great information about the connectivity with downtown. You know how well located this is for access by pedestrians and people cycling. So, just curious whether there's a plan for any um, 
additional bike infrastructure beyond what's already, um, you know, in the vicinity of the site? Yes. Yes, there is. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't um, fully detailed that yet, but we would, we have identified some spots that we'd like to put more bike racks and definitely have a lot of bikers in our crew. So definitely on the, yeah, on it's the like radar. having that facility can also yeah, encourage that behavior Absolutely. if people know there's a secure definitely. place to park a bike. Yeah, and we're definitely willing to um, put more, like, make that a more detailed proposition um, as as soon as that needs to be done. That's definitely on our interest. Okay. So Radar. Maybe include that on the site plan? Yeah. Yeah. Location of bike? Maybe you could Rex. do that, or it could be a, if, if that's what you want for this one. Yeah. yeah. That's doable. Would that, would that work? Yes. For you guys within this cycle of having that on there? Yeah. Okay. I think that would be easy. Yeah. Location and, uh, you know, something rough on volume. Yeah. You know, so. huh? Oh, yeah. Yep, um, we're having a point made here that it's part of the shared agreements that we need to be making with the condo association. So mm -hmm. we might have to actually converse with them about that as well. But yeah. from our end, it's very doable, but we'll, we'll have to chat with the condo association agreements about that. Okay. So just as a point of, if that's, if the board wants to make a decision tonight, um, something to th think about is that there will be future applications for changes of use for these parcels um, and if the board was amenable to it the actual location of bike racks could be part of a future site plan amendment that's administrative mm. it's a possibility you know in case because if they have to work with the condo association yeah. which hasn't been formed because none of the buildings have been sold so there's no actual new owners yet right if they're trying to coordinate where those bike racks are so that they can be used by multiple uses yeah. that might be then smarter. having that be yeah. a condition of this actual permit approval if that's where you're going something. might be a bit much so we could add something that just said that they will get back to us with the location of well but would they come back they might not come back to you Right. If no, it's you, otherwise, no. It, then we're back to you. Yes, it come back to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because totally you said that, so that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that could be. That I mean, could be that's it. a reference that that, that we yeah. could just add to it. That and can I ask you? We I mean we haven't had a had one like this is un, you know we haven't had an application quite like this. We have language noting some of the other issues that you know one would expect would be um, addressed when the condo use agreement is uh, advanced, you know, maybe there's a time limit if, if by which there's no uh, progress, then there is an expectation that there's some site-by-site uh, -site decision. Yeah, so so you're suggesting there be a condition of approval that the future condo association docs will, uh, is that what you're asking, that there yeah. be something in the condo association documents? Um, well, it just yeah, seems out of our purview yeah, for this evening. Yeah, I mean, we've done that. We, we can do that with certain, like, planned use development and subdivisions. But in this one, that's a little hard. Um, so you could just say that applicant has attested that they there will be bike racks and that applicant will return to the zoning administrator for a, you know, site plan update amendment when when agreement on where those are has been yeah, reached no, it works seems reasonable okay yeah, yeah. Uh, new trips i think we're um are there other questions about traffic or cars or such um, the next one talks about the character of the neighborhood, and uh, the staff has found that uh, is there, as they're not making any changes to exterior buildings, it seems like that's a, a given. Um, yeah, for that sub part of character of the neighborhood, right? The architectural right. aspect in the yep. yards.
Okay, so, um, also, uh, so, uh, character of the neighborhood has uh, architectural compatibility. That certainly seems fine. Don't forget to speak up enough so they can hear you. Oh, okay. sorry. sorry. The, the microphone is for remote. Oh. But if we have the PA system on, okay. it creates sorry. some weird echo. Um, so, uh, character of the neighborhood first deals with architectural or, um, and that obviously you're not changing anything so that's fine um yards lot coverage and landscaping um the staff found that it uh complied with it um which also makes sense because you're not changing anything there um the next one is uh the impacts of the use shall be consistent with the neighborhood, especially with respect to noise, hours of operation, and other features that define the area's character. The existence of one conditional use in a neighborhood should not necessarily be interpreted as justification for a similar conditional use to be located in that area. Um, so I think that we've talked about the noise. Um, and uh, so uh, noise and performances. Um, there are no new lights proposed. Uh, there's no grill or exhaust hood associated with the restaurant. Um, and we've talked about waste. Um, are there questions? Comments? Anywhere? Okay. Um, I guess I would say that um, we have determined that uh, the proposal does not have an undue adverse effect uh, on the on the neighborhood and character of the neighborhood. And do we still, I'm just looking to make sure we still have Mike and Michael and Joe. We do. I'm still here. Yep. Nope. I just I see you. I just I was no, there were I was double checking that there were no hands. No. No. Okay, and then um, the last part I have here is uh, three key determinations needed by the board prior to any motion. I think we've dealt with them. Um, <coughs> confirm applicable uses. Specifically, does the board agree with personal professional services use determination for the ground floor proposal? I think we just said yes to that. Um, does the proposal require a designated loading, loading area or is the current arrangement of the site sufficient? Um, my question on that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really feel like that's sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, and does the application satisfy the conditional use standards, particularly that, one, the proposal won't have an undue adverse effect upon traffic in the area, and that the impacts of the use will be consistent with the neighborhood, especially with respect to noise, hours of operation, and other features defining the College Street East State neighborhood? And I feel like we just talked about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, are there questions, other testimony that people want to give? Anybody remotely want to say anything? Any hands? I see none. Okay. It's a really long motion, guys. I'm sorry. I, I know. Be, I had to be <laughs> like, specific on this one so, because of the overlapping use situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we need someone to make a motion. I'll make a motion. Um, would you like some notes? She's added some conditions. Dang, you did. Uh, but there's really only one added condition, I think. Right? Okay, the, rever the reverse direction of the road. Yeah, and the, the revised site plan, because this isn't actually a condition. Okay. Right. This so, is just an attestation of what's going to happen, so that if the if the the yeah. bike rack stuff doesn't come back at some point, it is a, a violation of the permit because they attested to okay. doing that, but it doesn't have to be a condition. Okay. So the only uh, the only thing that would be added, Abby. Yeah. Is. Do you want to? Do you think you can read my handwriting? Um. Is it the re the reversed access needs to be included on the site plan? Right? Uh, okay. So, we provide it to yes. all of this uh, uh, subject to the I know. condition. Oh, hang on. What? Uh, 
with the test. So I kind of feel like. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if, similar to the conversation we had about the bike racks, if if the reversal of traffic could be part of that conversation that we have with the other potential owners. Um, we're certainly open to it. We think it makes a lot of sense, but it just may. Sure. Right. I'm just thinking about the new school, which yeah. is, um, you know, I want to have conversations about their buses. I think they'll be open to it too, but I would hate to have you make us do it if for some reason we can't. Or, I don't know. So, so does the board feel like Sorry, I need to go back to your microphone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this, yeah. So, thank you, Katie. Um, oh, cool. So here's the question. Does the board feel like the reversal of traffic is essential to happen to do the approval of the conditional use approval? Or is it an option? I would, I would say I no. I, 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 I would see it as an option. OK. But moving the trash is a requirement, right? Having the second trash location so that they don't have to drag the trash across all the I, way across the yeah, parking lot? Is that a, a requirement or is that an option? I, I, I think. think a requirement for their benefit. Yeah, I think it's a requirement. And a benefit of the neighbors probably. Awesome. For instance, like 11 o'clock dragging the trash yes. over. Um, so they could do this. So, so the findings of fact could find that they may come back for a revised site plan or the the parcel might at some point come for a revised site plan that has that reversed change it's an option right. basically um that the board is open to so that's a finding of fact before that actually happened there would need to be a new zoning permit by somebody <laughs> some applicant and who's on the parcel would need to do it, right? It wouldn't necessarily have to be 150 Main Street. It just, because it's a property, right? It's a property change. Um, but they would need to come in with a updated site plan showing where their their new trash area is that's designated for the restaurant space or their their space. Does that Right, and they can work? just do that administratively. That could just, yeah, that could be a, yeah. that could just be a pre-permit condition of here's where we're going to put our trash if later on the parcel as a whole has a site plan that adjusts it because they've coordinated with the rest of the condo association, that can be amended. Okay. Does that work? Okay. A revised site plan. So really, it's just this motion here. It's this motion here with the subject to the following condition that prior to permit issuance, a revised site plan will be filed with the zoning administrator um, indicating the location of the second trash, you know, not, or waste receptacle location. <laughs> so there's there's this red yellow highlight that's the option, right? Yeah. So oh, okay. subject to the following condition of approval, right, is going to be in there. One, mm -hmm. that prior to permit issuance, applicant shall provide the ZA, the zoning administrator, with a revised site plan indicating where the um, secondary waste receptacle location will be. Okay. Five years of doing this has finally made some of it quick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm ready to make a motion. So motion to grant the request for conditional use and minor site plan approval to change the uses in the Gary Li Library building at 35 Collins Street to A, 4,000 square foot of mixed use flex space on the first floor, including conditional uses of restaurant, eat in or take out, performance theater and exhibition, convention or conference structure conditional uses. Oh, whoops, sorry, conditional uses is there twice. <laughs> That it's okay. Work. The second conditional yeah. use is okay. was a typo. And permitted uses of museum, gallery, or exhibition hall, or pavilion, plus the existing library and academic institutional uses. And B, 4,186 square feet of personal and professional services 
uses for health and wellness center on the ground floor as presented in application Z2023-0029 and supporting and supplemental materials subject to the following condition. Prior to permit issuance, applicant shall provide zoning administrator with revised site plan indicating location of secondary waste receptacles. A second. Uh, let's do this by roll call. Gene? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Michael? Yes. Joe? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Abby? Yes. And I vote yes as well. That's that. Thank you for everyone who testified. Number two. Number two. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I'm just going to pull that application up here. Okay. So, all right. So that's that's all that one. Okay. Are you okay if I just put this here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, let's do this one this way. You want me to go first on this one? Yes. Uh, wait. That open. We got to re swear everybody right. in because it's actually a uh, different right, hearing. Right. We have officially closed that hearing. We are now officially opening the 31 College Street application. All those interested in speaking, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that your testimony is the whole truth, nothing but the truth, under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Uh, summary from Meredith, if you would. Okay. Uh, so, um, this is a change of use that requires board approval um, because it includes a plan for off-site parking. 31 College Street does not have any off-street parking on it. Um, it uses parking on the adjacent alumna parcel that we just dealt with that 35 College is on. Um, so that is, especially now that, I mean, you're going to sort of reconfirm the determination about the personal and professional services uses um, officially within this hearing. Um, but outside of that, the offsite, approving the offsite parking is the major ticket item. Um, and then just a minor confirming my analysis that the application is exempt from the landscaping provision. That's it. Um, and this is the the whole building will be the personal and professional services aspect is my understanding. Okay. So maybe we could hear from the applicant about what your ideas are here. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about parking? Sure. There is no parking <laughs> for the Crowley Center. There, there are no parking spaces on that separate little tiny parcel, and there's really no potential for separate parking spaces on that parcel. But there is parking available adjacent in the large parking lot with 113 spaces. And I'm sorry, what, what was the use of the, um, what's the use of the building? I mean, I'm just, I was just- reiterate, Just reiterate, the, the, the 31 College yes, health, health and Wellness Center. In, uh, under the personal and professional services yes. level of service. Yes. Okay, that's what I want to know, thank you. Um, so two kind of two wellness centers on that? I'm sorry, Gina, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, you, go ahead. Say, you want to say it again? Can you say it again a little In louder. conjunction with the other wellness center? Yeah. And Crowley, well, yeah. there's actually three buildings. Okay. Um, the Gary is has the personal and professional services on the lower level, but that's potentially designated for the hydrotherapy okay. um, facility that we're talking about. But the other two, Crowley and, Ma and Martin, are designated specifically for small healthcare practitioner okay. Spaces, okay, appointment you. only. Okay, yeah. The kind of thing we were talking about in the beginning. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. So, just as a note, so yeah, the personal and professional services is what iron is what the use is. It's being approved for the base of the the, the ground floor of Gary and both of the other buildings. Is based on what I've heard from all of the discussion. Mm -hmm. So that is all the like by appointment only type yeah. stuff. Okay. Okay. So what we need to do as a board is basically uh, 
we can allow off-site parking to meet the minimum parking requirements. Can you just talk a little bit about what the minimum parking requirements would be? Yeah. And how they might be met in some other fashion? Yep. Um, so the 31 College Street um, has 3,600 square feet of interior space. So we look at that. Um, and based on the use that's proposed, which is um, by appointment, sort of regular appointment times, um, and not, you know, nobody's staying there all day except for the um, people who work there, that space requires eight parking spaces. Um, the eight parking spaces can be approved by the board on a, a adjacent or just nearby parcel. Um, as long as it's within a 1,000 foot walk of the associated use, which 1,000 feet would be the other end of the adjacent parcel, so no problem there. Um, and the uh, from the applicant, the attestation is that for all three of these buildings, it'll be part of their project, um, one of which isn't really within the board's purview because it doesn't need their, their um, okay they're gonna have 38 parking spaces, which is more than enough under our zoning regulations to meet the minimum parking requirements for all three buildings at their highest parking need. Uh, um, uh, uh, when you say three buildings, the other one being the Martin House? Yes. Okay, thanks. Yep, and the, there's no, since the board has confirmed that the personal and professional services use is the correct use to apply to the wellness center yeah. aspects that have been discussed, yeah. um, that there's no need for the permit for that change of use for that building to come here. Right. Um, the can I give a little sort of big picture talk about the change of use for a second? I know do you want to sure. wait. Do you want to do the parking thing and then I'll step back and do that. Um, I want to sort of clear why five why Martin House isn't here even though it's on the same parcel as 35. Sure, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Sharon. <laughs> so the. A lot of times when we talk about changes of use or zoning permits, the board or I will, will look at the whole parcel. And here we have to analyze the whole parcel. But because the discussion is that these different buildings, especially on the bigger parcel, are going to be owned as a condo association situation, the permits tie, yes, to the parcel at hall, as a whole, but very specifically to specific buildings. So for this 150 Main Street's project that involves three buildings, each building needed a separate zoning permit. Mm -hmm. And only those buildings that have aspects that need the board review are here. Are here. Are here yeah. So Martin House, mm -hmm. right. does it has all of its parking on site. There's no conditional uses involved. That permit is completely separate and administrative, so there was no need to roll it in and add to what the board had to look at. Right. Excellent. So, and then, yeah, the parking. They need eight off-site, par off-street parking spaces that can be met with the parking that's available to the project as a whole on the um, alumna parcel. Okay. And still allow for all the other existing and anticipated uses per the chart that's in the application. Other questions? Joe, Michael, anything on this? No, I don't have any questions right now. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Oh, uh, I think I, I certainly my feeling is that there's ample parking to meet the eight space need that they need to hit with this. So. Um, and it seems like they're being quite thoughtful about parking on the, the site. Sorry, Meredith, the Alumlex parcel is, is the farthest, um, sorry. It's, it's all the way down the, the other end. That it's the big here. one that's adjacent. Yes, yep, adjacent. we're 35 so colleges. Yep. So, so when, it's just when, designating eight for, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, for and 20, and they don't have 20. to pick out like which eight go to yeah, that for zoning purposes. Okay. There's there's no so there's no need for us to do that. Sign in or designated, right. color coded. No, nope. no, nope. nope. they'll they'll work out. So any sure. any internal signage that's sort of an internal direction between the different businesses and uses, mm -hmm. um, as long as it's not signage that 
is designed to be seen from off the parcel is outside of zoning purview. That's all just sort of internal marking. Mm -hmm. um, if the if that one way gets reversed, approving how the traffic flow signage is placed right. is something that needs to be on a site plan. But who parks where? Okay. We don't care as long as it's within that 1,000 foot range and the entire parcel parking lot is within that 1,000 foot range. So if Plenty the condo association says, nope, 80 of your people, your employees have to park way at the other end, that's not our business. I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is just a tidy up. This, this, is, yeah. this is just something I can't approve. Mm -hmm. So let's entertain a motion. And you guys, you guys I agree would. with the exempt from landscaping? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so, a motion? Yeah. Is that one? Entertain a motion. Um, the applicant shall provide the zoning administrator. Oh, no. oh, wait. Sorry, sorry, I forgot. Um, we have to actually have yeah, an agreement. Sorry, yep. Yeah. I forgot about that part. How you want the written agreement. There has to be a written agreement yeah. for the parking spaces. This will reboot. The projector just got hot. Okay. I forgot about that. I'm sorry. My brain's too full. Um, all right. Applicant, so this is the applicant shall provide the zoning administrator with a... Um, Agreement or deed memorializing the shared parking agreement granting 31 College Street the right to use at least eight uh, parking spaces on the alumni parcel for a minimum period of 20 years. Yeah, so that's part of the zoning reg requirement. So it's a question of timing, right? Is that something that has to or can happen prior to permit issuance, or does the board set a time period after the decision, um, which I think seems to make sense with the coordination with other Aspects. entities so it could be as the as, as somebody who administers zoning regulations um typically you want things as a carrot to hold before you issue the permit <laughs> um but i don't know what the i don't know if the purchase and sale agreement says you have to have the permit in hand or you just have to have the approval, like the decision needs to be issued approving it. So that's a question for them. Do you? Just approval. Okay, so something, so if you don't need the permit in, in hand, it could be, you know, 30 days, 60 days of the decision. So within 30, 60, somewhere in there, days of decision, applicants shall provide the zoning administrator with an agreement or deed memorializing the draft shared parking agreement granting blah 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 so so 90 days is what we would say okay i think that's fine yeah that's fine that sounds fine so within 90 days of this decision applicants shall provide the zoning administrator with and i'm just going to say um a signed agreement or deed does that work yes Signed agreement or deed memorializing the shared parking agreement, granting 31 College Street, blah, blah, blah. And the rest that's there. You got it, Jean? I got it. All right. Motion to grant the request for a change of use and associated minor site plan approval of 31 College Street with off-site parking used to satisfy 3011 minimal parking standard as presented in application number Z-2023-0028 in supporting and supplemental materials subject to the following conditions of approval within 90 days of this decision. Applicants shall provide the zoning administrator with a signed agreement or deed memorializing the shared parking agreement granting 31 college street the right to use at least eight parking spaces on the alumnex parcel for a minimum period of 20 years all right second anyone second further discussion uh gene how do you vote yes kevin yes joe oh. yes michael Yes. Catherine? Yes. Abby? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you very much for the public for attending and thank you applicants. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so a little reality check. <laughs> <laughs> I've got three decisions to write 
and I am in training all day for the next four days in a different city. <laughs> so uh, I will do as much as I can, but I also then have three staff reports to write for the next DRB meeting that is in two weeks. So I've got like... Yeah, does the 90 <laughs> days start from today or when you hand us that thing? When the 90 days starts from when the decision is signed by Sharon. So cool. you've got, you're gonna have more than 90 days. Um, we have maximum, we have to get you the decision within 45 days of tonight or you get a no no conditions approval of what you applied for. So you will get that decision um, in less than 45 days. But I will I will get it to you as soon as I can. But there's it it's gonna have the conditions on it that you heard tonight. So at least you don't have to worry about what no those news. are. No, no, no surprises. news. No news. Where are you headed, Meredith? Yeah. What's the training? Uh, well, Audra's retiring in a year, so I have to learn all the certified floodplain management stuff. So I get four-day crash course in that. <laughs> nice. Um, so It'll actually be really cool. Do, do they send you somewhere that uh, floods really easily for that? Uh, Waterbury. Okay. <laughs> so our next meeting. <laughs> so our next meeting is when? Our next meeting is Monday, May first, and we do have for board uh, if. Guys, we do still have a public meeting going on, so um, so the next meeting is Monday, May 1st. There are three applications. Um, you can see what they are on the pending applications for public hearing page. They're linked. There's two sketch plan subdivisions and demolition of a portion of a historic structure. Um, and we will not have one of our board members for that particular application. Um, because he has to recuse himself. And it's not Rob this time. It's not Rob this time. Sweet. Um, so, <laughs> Joe, do you have anything you want to add? <laughs> <laughs> Just thought it'd be him. Uh, no, not that. <laughs> uh, motion? Um, yeah. A motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Somebody? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.